I'm Bill Woodcock with Packet Clearinghouse. Uh, we are the uh, largest provider of DNS backend services uh, in the world, and we provide DNS services to CIRA for .ca. Um, the DDoS attacks that have been happening um, to Spam House are very large relative to Spam House, but um, they're not large relative to the internet as a whole. And I think that the press has um, run with the, the press releases and so forth that have said that this is sort of World War III happening on the internet without really looking at um, the effect on regular people, which has been um, insignificant, not, not measurable at all. So there are no other major services that have been disrupted on the internet, and Spam House itself is a uh, spam blacklisting service that is sort of on the back end of a lot of internet service providers. So, you know, the, the very worst that anybody might have noticed was a small increase or um, uh, sort of a, a status quo for a day or two in the amount of spam that they were receiving. Um, because that's that's what Spam House does, is they feed uh, information about uh, spam to internet service providers to help them block sources of spam. Um, they got in an argument with someone who uh, didn't like the fact that they were listed on Spam House's list of spammers, and uh, so <clears throat> they took vigilante action, or criminal action in this case, uh, and undoubtedly uh, there's a lot of work for law enforcement to do in tracking down who all was involved in prosecuting them, uh, but ultimately this was an attack by one party against another party, and it was a very large attack relative to the size of those parties, but it wasn't large relative to the size of the internet or to you know major services like you know Yahoo or Gmail or YouTube or anything like that, which were not disrupted at all. So the problem is going on. Uh, this is a DNS reflection attack. So what's happening is the people who are creating the attack are sending queries to domain name servers that ask a question that has a very large reply and they're forging the address of the victim on the question. So they send the question and instead of saying, I'm me and I need an answer to this question, they say, I'm him and I need an answer to this question. So they send a small query out and a huge response goes to the other guy. And they do this to many, many, many different name servers out there that will all give large responses to the victim. And so this adds up to a huge attack, uh, 300 gigabits. The estimate is that it's about um, 100 to 1 uh, amplification between the amount of bandwidth that's being used uh, to request data versus the amount of data that's going towards Spam House. So they're using about three gigabits to initiate this attack, and that's being multiplied a hundredfold to 300 gigabits going towards Spam House. And <clears throat> this is still continuing um, because there are still name servers out there that will answer queries from anyone for any data. Um, in the old days, 20 years ago, in internet time, um, <clears throat> that was a, a great convenience, right? You could use your computer with static configuration pointed at a name server, and you could do that from anywhere. As you moved around, it didn't matter where your name server was. Um, but that's too easily subjected to abuse and that's fundamentally the problem we have. Um, we need everyone to use the name server that's local to their internet service provider and we need every internet service provider to not allow uh, people to forge queries and make them look like they come, came from someone else. Those are the two things 
that would make this problem go away. Um, the problem is that the smart people who are paying attention have already taken care of this, and it's the people who aren't paying attention who are the problem. And so how do you find those people? That's a, a very long, slow task. And uh, we've known about this problem for 10 years. For 10 years, the people who have been paying attention have been ranting about it to other people who are paying attention and have published documents saying that it needs to be fixed. And the people who are not paying attention are still not paying attention. So. Um, <clears throat> This is not the last time we're going to see this attack. This wasn't the first time we've seen this attack. Yeah. Spam House got attacked because of what they were doing and that they are uncompromising and that uh, they are tangling with people who are, uh, many of them, well-funded criminals. Um, regular users are not going to get attacked the way that Spam House got attacked. Um, what users can do is make sure that they're not part of the problem, that they don't become uh, a channel by which someone else can get attacked. And the single biggest thing that users can do is they can make sure that in the configuration of their own computer, their laptop, whatever machine that they travel with, that the name server that they use is chosen using DHCP, that it's dynamically configured based on wherever they are, not statically configured to a name server in some particular place where they're not, that they're reaching through the general purpose internet. because. If a name server has to be configured to support them doing that, then that name server is part of the problem that gets used in attacking other people.